Okay, um, so there's some older pictures of me and Adam. As you can tell, we look a bit older than uh, when those were taken. Uh, so as Adam said, brief, brief history, um, founded 2015 on the Gold Coast in Australia. Uh, we started with a single product, uh, Wallaby JS for JetBrains editors. We now have two main products, Wallaby and Quokka. Um, we've got a, another product um, that we released earlier this year, Dingo, uh, which is a VS Code uh, extension that you guys can check out. It's listed on the, uh, on the Wallaby and Quokka websites. Um, and we're, we're actually working on some other um, feature and product initiatives that we'd love to share with you if we get time towards the end of the presentation. Um, we now have support for five separate editors across both product lines. Um, so really that means that we have nine separate products to, to maintain across our team. And our mission is to create awesome software tools uh, for other software developers. That's what excites us. That's uh, what gets us out of bed in the morning and, and that's our passion. Uh, so we're, we're really lucky to, um, to be able to do that. A uh, quick quiz for the day. Uh, we have some weird uh, product names. Um, most of you guys, or some of you guys might know uh, what our products actually are named after. Um, but if you don't, our products are named after Australian native animals. So up the top, um, you have the, the wallaby that you can see up the top left. Um, the wallaby is like a, a smaller version of a kangaroo. Uh, down on the bottom right, uh, you have quokka, the happiest animal in the world. Uh, on the, uh, the top right, we have the dingo. Uh, so the dingo is a native uh, canine uh, to Australia. Uh, not usually a, a kind of uh, dog that you can have as a pet. Uh, they're, they're a little bit too wild. Um, on the, um, on the left-hand side, you have the Boo Book Owl, um, which is again native to Australia. And up the, up the top in the middle, uh, we have the Numbat. Uh, the Numbat is a, is a marsupial. All right, so uh, let's uh, kick off and talk a little bit about uh, how Wallaby works. Um, actually, before we, before we do so, some of, uh, some of you are new um, to Wallaby. We know that we have a number of registrations today uh, from people who hadn't seen Wallaby before or had requested a trial license. So very, very quickly, um, we're going to talk about what Wallaby is, um, show a very brief demonstration on getting started before we get into some, some of the more advanced concepts. Um, <clears throat> so what is Wallaby? Wallaby is a developer productivity tool that runs your JavaScript test, they could be TypeScript, CoffeeScript, um, immediately from your editor as you type. And unlike traditional uh, test runners that might uh, produce the results in your console and need you to save your files, Wallaby runs on your files while they're dirty and shows you the results of your tests right in your editor. There are a lot of extra features on top of what I've just described that, um, that Wallaby provides that we'll be um, demonstrating to you guys today. So very quickly, I'm going to um, open up WebStorm. Um, I have a little sample project here. And this is a really, I'm just uh, showing you guys my package JSON. I have only got one dependency, which is Jest, and I have a very basic Jest config. Um, so for the majority of projects, probably 60, 70% of Wallaby projects, um, you can start Wallaby without any, um, uh, without any configuration. So to start Wallaby, um, you can run the BS code command, Wallaby, oops, sorry, .js uh, start and you'll see you'll see there's also a hotkey for that and as soon as you start wallaby you'll see this little indicator down the bottom again i'm going to be pretty brief running through this because i know a lot of you are already familiar with how wallaby works i uh, just wanted to show the newcomers uh, you have your failing test listed on the left and your passing test listed on the right and if i click on the indicator down the bottom you will see um, the Wallaby console appears and there's some extra information displayed to you. Um, now here, this, this console is interactive, so you can control click to navigate to a particular test or to debug a test or open a test story or go to somewhere in a stack trace. So very briefly, I'm going to go here and you can see that we've got, uh, our editors changed somewhat. Um, there's an inline message that's displayed by Wallaby. So that's one of the things that Wallaby does for us. Uh, up the top beside the test itself, you can see how long the test took to execute. Again, that's something that, that Wallaby is providing to you. Um, and we've got these coverage indicators that appear on the left-hand side. And each of those coverage indicators mean something. Um, <clears throat> so green coverage indicator means that my entire line was executed um, by one or more of, of Wallaby's tests. Um, a yellow indicator that means that part of the line was executed, but part of the line was not. 
Um, a red indicator means that there's, uh, this is the, the source of a problem. And we have another indicator, which is pink, which is, means this particular line of code is, is on the way to a problem, but isn't actually a problem. So really high level, um, that's how you start Wallaby in VS Code. I'm gonna close this project now and just jump out into WebStorm and do exactly the same thing. WebStorm's a little bit different, requires a couple of extra steps. Uh, so here is exactly the same project in WebStorm. Um, exactly the same file location. Uh, now for WebStorm, you have to create a, uh, what's called a run configuration. Um, and this is a native concept in WebStorm. This is how you configure WebStorm to run uh, programs or, or debuggers or uh, test runners for you. So um, if I click add configuration, uh, you can see right now I don't have any run configurations. I'm gonna add a new configuration. Go scroll right down to the bottom, select Wallaby and Right now I could actually click apply, but it doesn't have a great name. So I'll just change the name to Wallaby and hit okay. And at this point here, Wallaby is ready to start, but to start Wallaby, I actually have to hit the, the play button. And you can see there's a hotkey for that shift F10. So if I hit play, the experience is, is a little bit different, um, but mostly the same. So we, we've just done things in a WebStorm way of doing things rather than a VS Code way of doing things. So similarly, if I click on this particular error, um, Wallaby takes me to the line. The coverage indicators are pretty much the same. You can see the inline message displays are the same. The, the test timings are the same. And, and the, the colors are may, may be a little bit different depending upon which editor that you're using. You can see this is a slightly different yellow, um, but that's the fit within the WebStorm theme versus the, um, the VS Code theme. So let's, uh, let's jump back to our presentation and keep going. Um, one thing I wanted to mention uh, specifically um, uh, sorry, just bear with me while I hide my uh, bookmarks. Uh, sorry, um, technical difficulties. I had configured this earlier, but um, my settings seem to have reset when I closed. All right, um, so I am going to go to our Wallaby docs just to show you guys our docs. Um, if you're new to Wallaby, and even if you're not new to Wallaby, our docs are a great way of getting started. Um, so we have all of our features uh, listed that we'll be going through today. You'll be able to um, revisit our features at any point and see exactly how they work. We have tutorials for getting started. And if in the event that Wallaby's automatic configuration doesn't work for you, uh, you can also refer to um, our configuration file docs and, and see how to create a figure, configuration file. If you get stuck um, at any point with configuring Wallaby, uh, create an issue for us on, on GitHub. Um, how to contact us is, is listed on, our, on the support section of our docs and uh, we'd be happy to give you a hand uh, getting started. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention uh, before we get uh, too much further throughout the presentation is uh, we have opened up the Zoom webinar for questions and answers. So if you have any questions along the way, um, please feel, fr uh, feel free to answer. Um, the rest of our team is, is going to be monitoring the questions and answers. So we'll either share the, the responses with the group in real time or um, reply to you individually. All right, so a little bit about, uh, that's a brief intro. Let's talk about how Wallaby works. How does Wallaby work? Magic, no, uh, not exactly. Lots of hard work and, um, and technical uh, know-how. Uh, but at a really high level, um, when you start Wallaby in your editor, we launch a node process in the background and that node process um, then spawns uh, worker processes that, um, that take care of, of how um, all of your tests run and how your tests are isolated as you make changes to your, your code and, um, and your test run. And then the, that main server process that's spawned from the editor aggregates all of those, um, all of the information from the worker processes and displays the results in a meaningful, meaningful way back to your editor. Uh, we, we're gonna be sharing the slides um, and, the, and the presentation um, once, once we've wrapped up. So um, don't worry too much about the detail. If you want, want to visit this um, later, uh, the slides will be available. And all the communication between the editor, the server process and the worker process is done by a standard out, standard error and, and web sockets. So really high level, uh, that's kind of how, how Wallaby works. Again, at the end, if, if um, you guys got questions and want to know a bit more detail, we'd be happy to, um, to answer. All right, let's, um, let's jump into some of the, the feature walkthroughs. So I'm going to go back to VS Code uh, for today. So we're going to use VS Code um, as our editor 
of choice for this particular demo. And I've got a different project, um, feature demos project. And again, this one's pretty simple. It's a little bit different from the last project that we saw that just had Jess. This has actually got uh, Jess with TypeScript. And we have a Jess configuration. And our Jess configuration, again, is pretty simple, just a test environment using Node. Um, and in this particular case, uh, we've also had to configure Babel um, for transpiling TypeScript to JavaScript for our Jest, uh, Jest test. Um, so I am going to start Wallaby again on this project. Um, here we go, pop up my command and palette, start Wallaby and you can see that it's running down the bottom. And I'm gonna click on, um, on the indicator to display my console. And at the top of your console, <coughs> you can see there's a launch coverage and test explorer. So I'm gonna click, control click this to launch my coverage and test explorer. And what you'll see is um, this new application is launched in your browser um, called Wallaby App. And Wallaby App provides a, a top-down view of, um, of your project in terms of the tests that have been uh, configured for your project, um, as well as coverage and errors and uh, any uh, logging that you might have added um, to your application. And everything that you see in Wallaby app is updated in real time. So just like Wallaby displaying uh, coverage indicators and, and your test status in your editor as you're typing, Wallaby app does the same thing. So it's, it's using the same uh, real time mechanism. Um, you might have noticed up the top that we're actually accessing um, the app via, um, via a public URL. Um, while the URL is public, all the communication that is happening between the app and your um, your editor is happening over a local host uh, WebSocket. So nothing's actually transmitted over the internet. It's just the application itself that is served um, served online. And <clears throat> depending upon your um, your network connectivity and depending upon your uh, your desktop, a lot of the times you'll see that this is actually local host, not, um, not our public URL. It's only the public URL when some network ports are not available. Uh, so here you can see that we can toggle and see uh, some which are our failed tests. We can see which of our tests have got logging. So none of our tests right now have got any logging. We, we can say, show me only tests that have been skipped. Um, I could say, show me all tests that are marked with a to do. And I can also uh, filter on tests that are slower than a particular time. So I could say, show me all tests that are slower than five milliseconds. And here we can see this is highlighted. This particular test takes eight milliseconds and our filter was for five. So not especially useful on, on a little sample project, but on a bigger project, uh, where you might have some slow running tests that you want to optimize. Um, you can obviously plug in any values that you wanted to. Um, so the um, the other, so you can see the test tab up the top. You can search um, as well for a test if you wanted to. Um, but there's another tab, which is uh, our files tab. And in the files tab, we see like a, a top down view of our uh, coverage for our application. Um, so you can see the coverage uh, on, the, on the left hand side in this tree view. But you can also see, um, if I click on the root node, when the root node was selected by default, I can see all of the coverage for all of the files, as long as, as well as how many paths existed at that, um, in that particular file and how many were covered or not covered. So if we have a brief look, uh, we can see, okay, all of the code in this particular file was covered. Uh, all of the code in this particular file was covered. And we can see here, um, you can see the same indicators that Wallaby would display. So you can see what's what's passing and what's failing. Um, but we can also see which particular paths weren't covered. And unlike your editor, you can see that this text is actually highlighted. Um, so the uncovered regions um, have been highlighted so you can work out what you might want to focus on. So in a nutshell, uh, that's Wallaby app. We'll, we'll revisit that a little bit more uh, when we talk about some of our productivity tips in terms of how we, um, how we optimize focusing on improving some of our code coverage. Um, again, in our docs, we have a section on Wallaby app if you'd like to revisit the features in a little bit more detail. Uh, the next thing I'm going to uh, move on to show you guys is advanced logging. Um, so we have a number of features that make it easier to uh, log values in Wallaby. Uh, so many of you have probably seen already, so I'm going to go to my um, upcoming birthday uh, file. Many of you probably already know, you can say console.log employees. Um, so that's pretty easy and we get our, um, our list of employees being logged in line. Um, we also have Wallaby's value explorer, 
that allows you to explore that actual value. Uh, so you can go and see the details and you can right click and go to uh, the source of what from. You can copy the data if you wanted to your clipboard. Um, what some of you might not know is um, you can also, uh, so for example, let's just change our code a little bit. Um, you can also log uh, promises. Um, so if here I wanted to log a promise, um, you can see Wallaby is still showing you the value, even though um, the promise hasn't actually been resolved yet. So that, that's um, that's a handy thing to be aware of if you if you don't already know. Um, you can also log things with identifier expressions. Uh, so identifier expression is simply um, uh, typing the name of an identifier without any actual code around it. So for example, you could say employee dot birth month. Um, sorry. I have a, a typo here. Um, oh, sorry, I can say uh, employee and what have I got? Oh, sorry, I've changed my code. Let me fix, fix my code back up. Uh, I can say employee.birth month. If I fix my code and <clears throat> Wallaby can output the values for me. And I can also use a special uh, context identifier as well. If I wanted to, for example, say uh, log just the employee's name, but not do that in my code, I could do that in my comment. So I could just, I could just log the, um, the name as well. Sorry, here we go. Just log the name. So there, there are a couple of different uh, options that you have available with advanced logging. Um, I, I recommend checking out advanced logging page, but I'm going to move on to show you one of the more advanced features that many people are not aware of in terms of our advanced logging. And that is the ability to um, proxy values. So if I go back to our, I'm going to go to a different test now. I'm going to go to my uh, car spec. And um, here we have a test that creates a new instance of an object, a car, and then uh, does some work with the car. This so accelerates the car and decelerates the car. Um, what I really want to do though, is I want to, um, I want to see exactly how and where is the car being accessed from within my code. So think I have a test that's failing. Um, I don't know exactly what's mutating my object or my values or calling a particular function on that object. And I want to be able to not necessarily debug, but quickly work out what, what, what's going on. Uh, so what I can do is I can use the special live value comment uh, with two question marks. And when I use two question marks, what you're doing is you're telling Wallaby to um, proxy this object. And you can see we've, we've got a, a special flag that appears um, in the in the code code tips um, that tells you that this particular value is being proxied. And if I go over to the Wallaby tools and I use my value explorer, um, you can see value explorer has changed a little bit and it's We've now got, we've got the value itself, just like we did before. Um, but we now have this extra section access to members and access members um, is actually going to list for us all of the different members that are part of this particular class. So could, there's an accelerate to method call. Um, there's a decelerate to method call. Um, but you can also see there's speed um, and there's speed get speed set. And what you're seeing here in the access members is exactly what was accessed on the object in what order. So we got the speed, it was zero. We set the speed, it was 88. And then we set the speed to zero. So if we have a, have a quick look, I can expand this particular tree node and expand the call stack. And I can actually click on the call stack and say, okay, get current speed. That's when we accessed the speed property of that object that we chose to proxy. Uh, so this, this is a great, um, a great little tool. As I said, a lot of people aren't aware that it, that exists, but it's really helpful in, um, in trying to diagnose issues. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to move on and, and have a look at Wallaby's time travel debugger. So you can see we've got a failing test um, down the bottom. So we released the time travel debugger in December um, last year. Uh, we've mentioned in, in a couple of uh, podcasts and, and blogs and uh, newsletters that we've written that we ourselves use Wallaby and, and our other product Quokka on a daily basis, but we felt a pain point, which was not being able to debug um, our code as, as we were writing it. So we really wanted to try and improve that experience. And um, the time travel debugger is the, the culmination of, of how we thought we would solve that problem. So I'm going to click and go to my failing test. And up the top, you see we've got some VS Code code lenses to debug 
uh, view a, a test story or, or focus a test, but we're going to choose the debug. And so if I click on the debug icon, our debugger appears. And you can see up the top, we've got some new icons that have been available to us. And our Wallaby tools section has changed and we've now got this debugger section as well. And if I hover in the debugger section, the same, um, the same action toolbar appears up the top. And we've also got some other, um, some other uh, sections available down below, but we're not going to be covering those today. Um, you can see we've got these, uh, these tool tips. So we've got uh, run back to the active line. So that would take the debugger back to this line. Um, we have step back out, uh, which is similar debugger uh, commands that you're already used to step into, step out, um, step over, but we've got step back equivalents of those things as well. We can stop the debugger and we can also step over, step into and step out and also run forward uh, to an active line. Uh, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to check the hotkey for that. So F11 to step into. So I'm going to step into uh, our constructor and you can, I'll, I'll continue to step into and you can see that we're setting the properties of the car and uh, I'm going to step into this guy as well, just to see what's going on. Okay. Um, this is the path that we've taken. Okay. And we're going to accelerate to, uh, okay. And it hasn't worked for us for some reason. And we can see that. So we were expecting the value to be Saturday 12th of November, 1955, but it's still uh, today. All right, so let's let's have a look at what our test is doing. So it should travel to the future if the speed is greater than or equal to 88 miles an hour. Uh, let's step back back into and see exactly what it was doing. Oh, okay, I can see what we've done wrong. Um, we, we just said it should be greater than or equal to 88, but it's actually, we've got greater than 88 here. So we've obviously got a, um, a bug. So I'm gonna, again, step back into, I'm gonna go into my code and change the value. Um, and you can see our indicators have gone green and I can actually start to uh, step into again and I should go into this particular code and I do and my test is passing. Okay, that's great. Now let's get back to our car TS file and in fact what I can do is I can say run back to the active line. Um, the other really nice thing that debugger allows you to do, uh, actually I, I will come back to this enable flux capacitor. I'm just going to step back to this active line. Um, the debugger allows you to simply select uh, a parameter or a, a variable or an expression and that value will be logged by Wallaby. So I just selected year and you can see the, um, the hover just showed me the year is 1955. Wallaby also showed you that the year is 1955 here. I could do a similar thing with month. Uh, I could do a, a similar thing with this. And as well as doing that, you'll see the value is, is available <clears throat> in Wallaby's value explorer if you wanted to explore it. Or if, if I simply wanted to see the speed um, it would show me the speed as well. So th those smarts are all built into the, the time travel debugger and um, and should be pretty helpful for you guys. If you wanted to, I, I, I told you we weren't going to go through the debugger um, today. I refer to our docs for a bit more information on that, but you can quickly navigate to various parts of your test as well, simply by, by clicking um, in the debugger section of, of the toolbar. So I'm going to stop our debugger now and we're going to move on to have a, uh, a quick look at the Wallaby test story viewer. So again, I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, of some background and what I might do first is I'm just gonna undo my fix so that we've still got that, um, that problem. Um, one, of the, one of the challenges that we as a team were, um, were struggling with was sometimes if you're unfamiliar with some code, it's a little bit difficult to understand exactly what a test is doing and why it's breaking in a particular way. And um, we realize that the same structures that you create to make your code testable and maintainable don't necessarily or aren't necessarily the best for making your code readable. Um, so what we did to, to address that is we, we created this uh, test story viewer and what it does is it shows you the start to finish execution of your test in a single view. So let, let's pop that up and, uh, and take a look. So I'm going to click on view test story. You can see to the, to the right-hand side, I'm just going to collapse my Wallaby tools for now. Um, <clears throat> to the right-hand side, uh, we have this test story view that's available. And if I scroll right up to the top, um, what we're seeing is the start to finish uh, lines of code that were executed, including your test framework as a part of running 
um, this particular test. Uh, so you can see that we ran our, our car spec TS, so that the file name is listed up the top. Uh, we imported the car, then we have some test framework code, uh, but then we finally got into running our test and we, um, we created our car. Then you can see we, we, at that point there, execution jumped into the, the car and the constructor ran and then it jumped back out into the car spec and we enabled the flux capacitor and then we jump back into the car. So you can see exactly um, what it is that, um, that your test has done. And you might also see that the debugger uh, command suddenly became available. And um, that's because the debugger is fully available in the context of running a test story. So if you wanted to, for instance, select a car and see the value, you can do the same thing that, um, that you saw before when we were using the time travel debugger. Um, so the real use case for test story as we see it, and that's not to say that you guys can't, um, can't come up with some, some other helpful scenarios, um, is I have some tests, I'm not exactly sure what the code is doing, and I, I just want to see um, what executed start to finish without jumping through different files and um, stepping into and out of different methods all over the shop. So um, we, we've found it pretty useful uh, since we've added it. We hope that you will enjoy it and uh, find the feature useful as well. All right, uh, let's jump back for a second uh, to uh, working a little bit or talking a little bit about how to maximize your productivity uh, with working uh, with when working with Wallaby. Uh, so first feature I'd like to show you, I'm gonna pop up our uh, Explorer again and I'm just gonna stop Wallaby. Um, we added, I, I think it was about January or February this year uh, we added the ability to start Wallaby on a particular file. So previously Wallaby um, would start on your entire project and you, you could exclude some tests from being uh, executed, but um, you couldn't say just start tests on this particular file or folder. Um, now what you can do is you can right click on a file or a folder. So let's say uh, I only want to run my birthday test. Um, and there is a new command that's available in the context menu, start exclusive test run. So if I start an exclusive test run on just this file, um, what you'll see in a moment is the indicators on my car spec and on my car file that aren't part of the birthday tests, um, they're all white because nothing's actually uh, happened with that particular file. Um, but the upcoming birthday file and the upcoming birthday tests have been configured or have, have been executed. And down the bottom, if I pop up our output window, you can see that um, we've only executed those tests in that file and Wallaby is telling us that. If at some point you wanted to run more tests on a different folder um, or on a different uh, different file in addition to the tests that you see here, uh, you can just right click on another file or folder and add those tests also to the exclusive test run. So if you're working on a larger project with lots of tests, this is a really helpful feature to try and maximize your, um, your productivity and, and get, get testing uh, quicker. The, um, the next thing I want to show you um, is, and I'm, I'm just going to restart Wallaby so that it's running all of the tests in our project. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you is our, our test filtering or test focusing feature. So I'm going to pop up our car uh, code file and I'm going to pop up our spec. And I'm just going to split, split the car to the right and I'll close it over here. Um, so what you can do, you can choose to focus uh, a test. And what focusing on a test does is it will update your indicators that Wallaby displays in your editor so that you are only seeing the indicators that are related to that test or to the, the set of filtered tests. So for example, if I choose to, uh, let's say, focus on this test, okay, you can see before uh, Wallaby was actually showing that um, we had uh, the constructor indicators were pink, so they were on the, on the path to an error and they've changed to green and some of the other sections of, um, of the file have also changed. So the coverage for decelerate to, uh, which we had before, which was green has now changed to white. So if I remove that from our filter, you can see this has changed to green and some of the other color indicators have changed. And now if I filter that again, uh, you can see those indicators have changed. So this is a really good way of just looking at the coverage indicators for the test or, or set of tests that you're working on. Um, you can have multiple tests filtered at the same time and you can remove tests from the filter one by one and you can also do the same thing uh, through Wallaby app. Um, so that, um, that's a really helpful way of 
let's say focusing on a particular test or focusing on code coverage and only seeing indicators and code coverage for what you're working on right now. Um, next productivity tip that we're going to uh, go through is uh, searching tests. So again, um, a feature that we added fairly recently, I'm just gonna close this guy here and pop up our console again. Um, you can see in the console, we have a search tests command. And if I click on that search test command, um, the tests uh, that are available in our applications show here. And this is using VS Code's quick pick. So we can simply type, let's say future to see all of the tests that have future in them or um, let's say uh, enabled, oops, future, uh, sorry, uh, when, okay. So we're, we're, we're seeing skipped, there's a skip test should travel to the future when the flux capacitor is enabled. Um, and if I click on that, it will take me straight to that particular test, which is this guy here. Uh, you can launch the same uh, same things using command. So wallaby search and you can search test. So again, working a larger project with lots of tests, if you know what, what it is that you're looking for, this is a really handy little, uh, little feature. Um, so we, we spoke a little bit about uh, test uh, filtering, test uh, foc uh, focusing filtering. Um, the test focusing and filtering um, is actually quite smart in that Wallaby doesn't need to re-execute your tests uh, before it can, um, can show you results. So your tests have already been executed. It's just changing what's displayed in your editor. Uh, there are other ways that you can actually choose to focus on a particular test. Uh, for example, using your framework specific uh, command. So Jess supports dot only to only run a particular test and you can see Wallaby is obeying that framework hint. So it's only running that test. Unlike test focusing, um, when you do this, because it's happening at a deep framework level, um, your entire tests for your project have to be re-executed as you add those hints, because there's no way for us to identify which tests or which code coverage maps to which code files. So um, that's just one thing to be aware of. So I would prefer focus um, over, um, over using the, the framework specific commands if, um, if you have a choice. Uh, Wallaby also has a, another little hint, which is you can say file.only, uh, which basically tells Wallaby um, just to run this specific file. Um, again, it's, it's a bit like the framework specific commands. If you use file.only, um, kind of all bets are off in terms of your, your code is going to have to re-execute uh, or your entire project test is going to have to re-execute as you add and remove that comment. But that's, a, that's another handy one that are there for you. Um, and then the, finally, the, um, the, there, I think there's, there's two more uh, tips for us to go through with you. And the first is you can now change Wallaby to only run your tests uh, on save. So right now Wallaby is running my tests as soon as I start uh, typing my code. So if I come up to my editor, I turn auto save off. As I change my date, um, in fact, this particular test is broken, which we already know. So we might just fix that test. Uh, sorry. Okay. As I change my code and I haven't actually saved anything yet, um, Wallaby is running my tests. So if I now save all, um, Nothing has changed. Wallaby's already run the test. Everything is good. But what you can do is you can put Wallaby into a run only on save mode. So if I go Wallaby and save, so I can say, make the current session run on only on save or make the current session run on any change or on save. So let's make it run only on save. So if I click on that and I change this value, uh, you can see my indicators have disappeared. My code lens has, dis has disappeared because my, my tests are, um, are now invalid. So nothing's actually executed in terms of uh, Wallaby knowing about which results to show for your code right now. And if I go to say file, save, um, at that point, my tests are gonna run. So again, if you're working on a larger project uh, or doing a big refactoring and, and you know that you don't want your tests to run until you save the file and, and you're done with your changes, uh, that's a handy little feature. You can also, um, uh, sorry, I'm just going to turn auto save back on. Uh, you can also configure Wallaby to run on the um, on save mode only um, in your config file if you want that to be your default behavior. Um, and, and finally, if, if you're working with a, a larger project and you've got lots of tests, uh, what you might want to do, or you, you've got, let's say, some unit tests and some integration tests, you might also want to create a Wallaby configuration file. Uh, for slow running tests and for fast running tests. So that's, that's another productivity tip when working with the uh, larger projects. 
All right, let's let's jump back to our um, our PowerPoint slides. So next, we're going to move on to using Wallaby to improve code coverage. So let's uh, let's take a look at what uh, what that looks like. Um, now, Wallaby app that we launched before is a key part of uh, that particular scenario. So if we are looking to improve code coverage in our app, um, <clears throat> probably one of the first things we're, we're going to want to do, whether we're working on a specific file or whether we're um, we are, are working on uh, looking at our entire project is just to take a bit of a look and see, all right, so what is code coverage looking like? Uh, where are the hotspots that I might need to focus on? Now, this isn't to say that these are, are good hotspots that are, are necessarily meaningful for your project, but to, it's not a bad indicator for you to, to start with and, and take a look at. Um, like I showed you before, um, focusing a test is another great way to, to improve your productivity. If you're, um, if, as, you're, as you're working on code coverage. So if you wanted to work on a particular uh, code path and, and see exactly what was being executed, I can add that test to the filter and I can go into my code and look, it's like, oh, look, I was expecting this to be executed, but it's not being executed. Make sure that my, uh, my test is actually covering that or create a new test to, to cover that particular uh, scenario. Um, just like um, the Wallaby app, you can also um, run the Wallaby command toggle uncovered code regions to see right in your editor which code regions are not currently covered uh, by any of your tests. Um, one thing to be aware of as soon as you make a change to your file, uh, Wallabies, or we, we are going to remove that from your editor. So you're going to have to toggle that, have a bit of a look at, okay, so what is it in my file? What is, exactly is it doing? And then you're going to make some changes and then you might want to toggle that again to, to check. Uh, whether the changes you made were effective in terms of uh, what you're hoping to achieve from your code coverage. The, um, <clears throat> there are a couple of other things that you could do. Um, and the, these are, um, are a little bit broader changes that can potentially have an impact on other Wallaby features as well. If you wanted to, so let, let's say I had a utilities class or a test utilities class that I didn't want to be included in my code coverage in, um, calculations, what I could actually do is I could have a, a, a comment anywhere in your file that says ignore, uh, sorry, file coverage. And as I say, ignore file coverage, you'll see that all of the indicators from this file have disappeared. If we go back to our test, our test still has indicators, but the car class itself um, doesn't have indicators anymore. So Wallaby's actually removed all coverage from, um, from this particular file. And I said that that, ha that can have an impact on your features. Things like the time travel debugger at this point are not gonna be available to you because you've, you've chosen to not instrument your file and, and not have that coverage information available to you. Um, so that, that's, a, that's a much um, a broader operation that you probably wouldn't wanna do uh, for the most part. Uh, but what you can do is you can, uh, so for example, say, I want to ignore coverage on a particular branch or on a particular path. And you can see now we don't have coverage in um, indicators displaying here. And if I go back to Wallaby app, you'll see our coverage is now looking like 100% because Wallab we've told Wallaby, don't consider the if statement or its then branch or its else branch as part of your, um, your or Wallaby's code coverage um, calculations. And if, if you have uh, something like a CI configured and your CI supports uh, code coverage uh, calculations as well, you could configure your, your CI build to look at um, similar indicators for which branches to cover or not cover. Um, <clears throat> you can also have that same ignore coverage down at the uh, line level. So if I, if I do this, um, now I, I come back. Okay, so we're, we're ignoring coverage here, but um, this particular branch is still covered. Uh, a good example of where we might do that in our own code base is um, a lot of the time we have maybe some some try catch blocks and we may not have tests that fully exercise our catch blocks uh, but we still have logging um, that then re-throws uh, re the error and so we might choose not to have code coverage as part of our, um, of our, our catch blocks so that we get a better indicator of, of code coverage as, as it pertains to what we're looking for in our particular project. Um, okay, let's uh, move on quickly. Um, coming back to uh, navigating with Wallaby shortcuts. So Wallaby has a lot of commands that are available um, that you can either map to or that are already mapped by keyboard shortcuts. Uh, so if we just go wallaby.js, um, 
I, uh, we're, we're kind of running out of time. I wanted to leave some time for Q and A and we've got a, a couple of other things that we wanted to get through. Um, so what I, I recommend that, uh, and Adam, please jump in if you think there are any particular shortcuts um, that you wanted to, um, wanted to highlight today. Um, but um, I would recommend looking at these shortcuts, specifically look at the ones that we've already assigned hotkeys to, because we think those are the ones that you're going to use uh, more often. Um, but have a look at those shortcuts and take the time. Let's say you know that you're going to be have a set. You're going to have a session testing with Wallaby. So okay, today I'm going to make sure that I know how to use this particular shortcut. Um, and there, there are there are nine or ten uh, really high value shortcuts that you would want to use um, over time. Um, and being familiar with those are going to make you a lot more productive as you use Wallaby. You can also, if I go back to our test, um, you can also, for example. Um, use the code lens. So control dot in VS code is the default to pop up the code, code lens so I can debug a test, or open a test story. So we, we integrate with your, your editor's methods of displaying uh, the, the contextual app um, actions that are available to you. And if, for example, you had a value selected like car and you wanted to show the result, again, you can, you can pop up a code lens and say, show me the value of car and, um, and Wallaby will, will show that to you. Uh, should show that to you. Sorry, uh, show me the value of car. For some reason, my this t test isn't running. Sorry, bear with me. Uh, did I ignore coverage? Perhaps. Okay, so show me the value of car, and, and the value of car will appear. So those those actions are available to you. Um, down the bottom, uh, VS Code. Um, any errors that we have? So again, let's let's change our test. Let's accelerate test. Let's break it again. Um, VS Code displays failing tests reported by Wallaby in the problems view. And you can use the, the VS Code <coughs> shortcuts for that. So go to next problem, uh, which I think is uh, F8, to take you to, to the problem itself. So you can quickly navigate by pressing F8 to the, to the failing test if, if you wanted to use the problems view. Um, the final section um, that uh, we're going to talk about very briefly is snapshot testing. Um, not everybody likes snapshots as a concept. Not everybody uses them. Um, we use them on occasion where we have more integration uh, test uh, or integration style tests that we want to report on. So things like uh, email content or something that's big and bulky that um, we've already reviewed manually and we want to just snapshot that uh, information. So Wallaby has full support for just snapshots. So for example, I might want to say expect car uh, to match uh, snapshot and <clears throat> Wallaby knows, oops, let's uh, pretend for a moment that our test wasn't failing. Um, Wallaby knows uh, how to create snapshots. Um, so here we can see uh, there's a snapshot that's been created um, and depend there, are, there are various uh, testing frameworks that support snapshots and, and Wallaby integrates with a number of those, including Jest. Uh, so you can see we've, we've got the, the value of the Jest snapshot that's been reported. If we were to go and change, let's say the speed, our snapshot is failing, our test is failing, and Wallaby provides you the ability to see the side-by-side -side diff for that snapshot, um, update the snapshot. So if I click update snapshot, um, you can see that the snapshot's been updated and you can see the indicator is slightly different showing us that there is a snapshot in this particular line. And in addition, uh, if you had a, a, a big refactoring or a big change and you know that things are broken in a particular way, you've perhaps reviewed all of the, um, the diffs in your Wallaby output window and you know everything's good. Uh, you can also run, for example, a snapshot. You could update all snapshots for your project, all snapshots for your file, or just the current test that you're focused on right now. So if I updated all the project snapshots, uh, everything's going to update at, at once. All right, uh, let's move on uh, very quickly. Um, there are some people uh, on the call that may not be familiar with uh, Quokka. So um, at a very high level, our other product Quokka is very similar to Wallaby in terms of what it looks like as it's running. Um, but it actually is running your code outside of a test. And I'm going to show you what it looks like in a moment. Um, unlike uh, Wallaby, which could be running your tests in the browser or Node and performing a whole bunch of uh, transpilations and uh, have some middleware that's serving um, over HTTP, Quokka is quite basic. It runs in Node and it doesn't have any configuration. Uh, so let's let's have a quick look at what Quokka looks like. So I'm actually going to stop Wallaby right now. And uh, I've got the Quokka extension installed. So the Quokka extension is available on um, each of the editor marketplaces. Um, so check out 
our Quokka website for uh, more information on how to install it for your editor. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new Quokka file. So Quokka, uh, you can see I can create a new JavaScript file. I can create a new TypeScript file. So let's create a new JavaScript file as a quick example. And I can say uh, my date equals now. Oops. And I can log my date and see the value. So very similar to, to Wallaby. And you can see we've got this console that's appeared down the bottom. Um, a little bit similar to Wallaby test view, but it's um, perhaps a little bit less interactive. Um, now, uh, what I might do if I stop that Quokka file, I'm just going to close that file and I can say Quokka new file and by saying Quokka new file, I can actually open from a list of examples. Uh, so one of the things I, I might not be familiar with is, uh, let's say array splice. What exactly does array splice do? And if I look at array splice and click on that guy, um, it pops up an example for me and I can actually work through the example and, and play around with it in real time to see uh, what it's doing. Um, so for example, if I wanted to say Feb, uh, okay, so, and, and you can see Quokka is updating in real time as I'm typing similar to Wallaby. Uh, so um, Wallaby is great for running a test. Uh, Quokka is, is more in that I've got some code that I want to experiment with, or I've got a, a little one file prototype that I want to play around with. It, it, it can and does work in bigger projects, um, but a uh, handy little tool um, that, uh, that we wrote after writing Wallaby because we saw a slightly different uh, feature set need um, for what we, we ourselves were working on. Uh, so that's pretty much the the uh, the end of today's presentation. Hopefully we have some time for questions. And um, if we don't, then um, uh, Adam and I could definitely share some of the things that um, that we're working on at the moment. So enjoy Wallaby and Quokka and uh, and Party Heart.